first up one excerpt of yeah, sachin tendulkar's one excerpt of sachin tendulkar's autobiography talks about how greg chapel asked you to open the innings in tests at a time when you were settled in the middle order and you politely turned him down and after which chapel made a veiled threat of sorts that at the age of 32 it would be difficult for you to make a comeback in other words perhaps insinuating that you could be dropped from the team tell us a little bit more about that experience Yeah, I know this. This happened at the Vankhede Stadium uh, in 2006 when India played against England, and I didn't play in the Test match because we played only with five batsmen, and Yuvraj Singh was preferred ahead of me. Uh, and uh, and we were going to uh, the West Indies uh, for a, for a four Test match series after that. You know, so I think the selection was going to happen in a day or two. And I remember clearly that Greg uh, came up to me when I was watching the match, and uh, he asked me whether. i would open you know and uh, i i clearly mentioned to him that in 2000 uh, itself i decided that i'm not going to open anymore because the first four years in my international cricket i uh, cricket i tried being opener but didn't work for me so i decided that i i'm going to play in the middle order and since 2000 i was very consistent uh, a performer for the team in the middle order and when i mentioned to then uh, the, uh, greg chapel at that time uh, he asked what my age was and i was just 31 32 at that time and uh i mean i was really shocked by his remark at that time where he told uh, number one don't you think that uh, 31 is too young age for you to uh, sit at home uh, and i was really uh, shocked uh, by that uh, comment from the coach you know because uh, even since the time greg chapel took over uh, as captain which he did, as a coach which he did in 2005 i had a very good run under him as a coach you know and i was probably the second is run getter in whatever test matches we had played till uh the england series so i was really shocked by that remark uh, of greg chapel uh, and and uh, you know i totally uh, agree with sachin you know because uh, 2006 uh, the entire year i think it was the worst dressing room atmosphere uh, i ever uh, been part of you know and i played for 16 years under various coaches various captain uh, but uh, i think the 2006 dressing room atmosphere was probably the worst of the lot Right, Vivius. Looking back uh, at uh, the time that you spent in the Indian cricket team with Greg Chapel as the coach at that point in time, from 2005 to 2007, any other incident that you can remember where you were treated unfairly? Because a number of other big cricketers are coming forward now and speaking out about how Greg Chapel at that point in time tried to divide the team and create rifts in the team itself. Yeah, see, I think uh, uh, this was one example. Uh, but more than that, you, you you yourself mentioned about creating a divide in the team, you know, and I thought that was very much evident, uh, because uh, a cricket team is like a family, you know. There's no seniors or no juniors, and everyone tries to help each other out, you know, because when you're going out uh, in the middle to play against the opposition, you're going out as a team, as a family. So there is no point in creating a divide between the seniors and juniors. And I'm going to say that the dressing room atmosphere was not cordial or amicable. It was just because of the rift being uh, not more than the rift, the divide being created uh, uh, among uh, the juniors and seniors. You know, and I right. think it was very unfortunate. Uh, and also the insecurity the seniors faced. You know, because it was very evident by uh, the various statements he made in the in, in the open in the media, saying that you know he wants to get. uh the team changed you know and he wanted youngsters to come into the side and i think that's not a problem but when your seniors are doing well and performing well then why uh, he, he has to think in that manner i didn't never understood you know and we always talk about uh, john red the way he coached the indian team i think it was one of the best dressing room atmosphere and so also gary kirsten and i remember uh, gary made sure that everyone whether he is a junior or a senior Uh, was given importance in the team because everyone has a role to play in a team it's not an individual sport it's a team sport where everyone has to do their role well for the right. team to win uh, and i think uh, under gary kirsten i probably had the best years you know and uh, that was after uh, uh, greg chapel uh, finished his tenure as the indian coach you know so right. i think it was unfortunate the 2006 especially the south africa series was the worst of the lot mm. i remember i went for the last uh, one day i was added in the team in the last one day in south africa and just before the start of the first test the uh, the historic win in joburg i think that one week to 10 days i think it was uh, a lot of tension within the team which was very unfortunate can you recount any ins- any particular incident vvs that happened at that point in time generally you know i mean no one were uh, confident to speak uh, uh, freely in in the team you know so it was very unfortunate i still remember we had a meeting uh, in pochestrom uh, 
even before the start of the test series. You know, we, we, practice, we were playing a practice game in Pochestrom before the first test in Joburg. And I remember the entire team got together without the support staff, without the coach or the assistant coach. And we all uh, talked freely, expressed our views. And we ultimately decided that it's us who are representing the country, not the coach. And so it's very important that everyone had good understanding amongst ourselves, you know, which was very important the way we play. Because that bonding is very important when you go out and play against the opposition. Uh, and, uh, and the result was there in the first test in Joburg where we played probably one of the best test matches ever uh, an Indian team has played. So I think it's, it's unfortunate that uh, uh, that 2006 uh, the period was uh, a very turmoil period. Right, VVS, I guess it would be fair to say that Greg Chappell is not really one of the most liked figures here in India. But did he come across as a vindictive individual to you? Because what some other, other players have come forward and said, like Harbhajan Singh has recounted a certain episode where he was typing out an email against Saurav Ganguly at a time when Ganguly was batting, was out there in the middle in Bulawayo in a test match versus Zimbabwe. These seem to point at the fact that perhaps Greg Chappell was vindictive towards certain seniors in the team. Would you also agree with that? Uh, to start, you know, uh, Akash, I was a huge Greg Chappell fan. You know, right from my uh, childhood, I used to idolize him. In fact, there was a Greg Chappell photograph on my uh, wardrobe, you know, and uh, uh, I used to always adore him, you know, his style of play. And when he took over as a, as a coach of the Indian team, I was really excited because he probably had the best knowledge, one of the best uh, no, uh, you know, person to have knowledge about batting, mm -hmm. and I was really excited about that. But as uh, his, his tenure progressed, and uh, I, I'm not sure about being vindictive, but definitely the way he handled uh, the team uh, mm -hmm. was not ideal. You know, especially for an international team, I think it was not ideal. Would you say then, in other words, VVS, since you're saying that at one time you really liked Greg Chappell, the cricketer, would you then say that he went from hero to villain for you? I, I think villain is a very harsh word. You know, I, I wouldn't call villain, but definitely what I expected uh, uh, and uh, what I thought he would he would uh, contribute to Indian cricket, he definitely didn't uh, live up to my own expectations. You know, which was very unfortunate. Right, you know, one uh, another excerpt of the Sachin Tendulkar autobiography talks about VVS, about the fact as to how Greg Chappell wanted Sachin to take over as the captain of the Indian cricket team in the ODI format and replace Rahul Dravid just months before the 2007 uh, World Cup. What's your reaction to that? Did you hear about this earlier when you were part of the team as well? No, I have not heard about this. You know, and, and I will totally believe Sachin. You know, and we all know what a great uh, cricketer Sachin has been. You know, he's been a great ambassador of the sport. Uh, and again, that shows the character of Sachin. In fact, when we were playing, there were so many times when I told Sachin, why doesn't he come out in the open yeah. and talk freely about the things which were happening? And credit to him, because he respected the game so much. He was so passionate about Indian cricket. He always said that there's no point in coming out in open and mm. adding to the furor of, of uh, you know, the, pr pr the problem, because mm. every Indian loves the game so much. But he definitely used to communicate the message to the people who matter. Right. You know, he definitely used to communicate the, to the people who were the decision makers. And if you know, even after the World Cup, it was Sachin who actually told that, you know, uh, Greg Chappell shouldn't be retained as the coach of uh, the Indian team. So I think, you know, I, I would definitely believe what Sachin uh, uh, told uh, in, in, uh, about that incident when Greg came to his house mm. and asked him to take over as captain and uh, uh, instead of Rahul. You know, I would definitely believe. There was no, there's no question uh, in my mind, you know, no doubt at all not to believe Sachin. Right, that was actually going to be my next question, VVS. There is a certain school of thought uh, at this point in time that questions why didn't Sachin Tendulkar or for that matter other uh, senior India players, why didn't they come forward earlier and talk about their, ins their experiences with Greg Chappell? Would you say it's because they wanted to respect this particular thing that Sachin talked about, this integrity within the team, not to spoil things, not to allow uh, these things to make headlines at a time when the team was out there in the middle playing, Maybe he waited for his retirement before he spoke about this. Absolutely. I think that's very important. You know, I think it's very important to be having a cordial uh, environment within the dressing room. Uh, and I think, as I mentioned uh, before the first test in Joburg, we had uh, a, a team meeting where we thrashed this uh, uh, topic out, you know, amongst the uh, players. You know, it's not necessary to come out in the open and talk about it because what's important is how we all react to the situation we were at that time. So it's not that we discuss uh, it with the open, you know, in the media. It's not necessary to come out. 
Uh, but we all, always mention that we enjoyed, uh, uh, you know, playing under uh, Gary Kirsten. We've enjoyed playing against John Red, but no one ever has come and said that they've enjoyed playing under Greg Chappell. So I think the message was uh, out clear and loud. Uh, but but I think what is important is within the four walls of a dressing room, it's important that all the players are comfortable with each other, which was very important for us. And I believe that after uh, that, that meeting we had at Pochestrom before the first test, I think it was a much better dressing atmosphere, dressing room atmosphere. Right, you know, that brings me to my next question, VVS, about the entire philosophy of picking a coach here in India. We all know that there is this entire debate between Indian coaches and foreign coaches. Whenever a new coach is picked, and in, inevitably it's usually a foreign coach which is picked, there are certain people who say that perhaps Indians make better coaches. Now, you're speaking about how people like John Wright, like Gary Kirsten, have turned out to be excellent coaches for India, and they were both foreigners. But do you think this particular episode, now that we know so many details about Greg Chappell and his tenure as India coach adds to fuel to the fire of that debate of the Indian versus foreign coach debate. Perhaps the board needs to wet coaches better. See, I uh, always uh, I believe right from the time John Wright took over as the coach uh, that it's not necessary whether it's an Indian coach or a foreign coach as long as the coach is capable of. Uh, you know, making sure that the potential of the team is realized. Mm. And I think a coach plays a very important role uh, uh, in the performances of the team along with the captain, you know, because uh, that is what John Wright as well as uh, Gary Kirsten has showed in their tenure. But as long as the coach is capable, it doesn't matter whether it's an Indian or uh, a foreign coach. And we've seen recently uh, coaches like Sanjay Banga, uh, Bharat Arun and Sridhar, yes. uh, the assistant coach, the b bowling coach and the fielding coach have been uh, taken, uh, given an opportunity uh, and, and they've used the opportunity brilliantly and everyone, whoever I talk in the current Indian team are really praising all these three coaches. So I, why not? You know, if, if, the, if the coach is capable of delivering, it doesn't matter whether he's an Indian coach or uh, a foreign coach, but as long as he's capable of delivering because in India, cricket, I always mention, is a religion, it's just not a sport. And everyone, the entire country follows the fortune of the Indian team. So we want the most capable person to be as the coach of the team. Right. One final question, VVS. If you could describe Greg Chappell and what he did to the India team in one word, what would that word be? I think he took the team uh, backwards, definitely, without a doubt. All right, Vivyas Lakshman, thanks so much for joining us uh, with and sharing your thoughts with us on something that's really making headlines the world over, the Sachin Tendulkar versus Greg Chappell saga. Vivyas, thanks so much for joining us with that.